in the slow letters, right? Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I want to welcome everybody here to the tonight's facility committee meeting. And uh, I would ask the clerk to call a roll. Kibler? Quisenberry? Here. Rosales? Here. Schwartz? Here. Anderson? Here. Hartke? Here. Maxwell? Here. Would like a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, February 3rd Facilities Committee meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carried. Um, would like to uh, consider the approval agenda next, but uh, I've been notified that uh, item 7 will be pulled this evening because that lease is not quite ready to come before us. And so I would like uh, to entertain a motion to approve the uh, agenda as amended. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval, or pardon me, is the public participation portion of our meeting this evening. So far, we have uh, one slip, and it's from Rom Custer. And would you come before us, and uh, let's hear what you have to say. Thank you. Uh, 1209 West Oregon in Urbana. Um, I just came here today to say that I was really inspired by the study session that took place last week. It felt like it was really good discussion. There were a lot of good critical questions raised. Um, it felt like it was more than just a nuts and bolts discussion about the plan. It included a lot of important questions about what criminal justice looks like in our county and the possibility for criminal justice reform. And I was really grateful for that. I was grateful not only for what the county board was saying, but also for the public participation, the folks who came here to talk um, and share their points of view with us. Um, some of the points that seemed important to me from the study session that I wanted to highlight tonight, um, I heard over and over again this question, do we need this much jail construction? You know, is there a way to scale back on what we have here? Do we really want this much? Um, that seems like an important question that, that's going to carry over into other discussions when we talk about the possibility um, for jail construction, but also the possibility of alternatives to incarceration. Um, another one was, are we losing our minimum security option? Right now, the downtown jail sort of represents a minimum security facility in, in some respects. There's more movement that people have, more liberties. And if we're going to close that down and we're going to open up um, new, new beds at the satellite based on this expansion, it looks like they're all maximum security cells. Did we lose that option? And that felt like an important question, and I, I have to admit I was a little bit frustrated by Kimmy and Associates' response to that because it seemed to boil down as it's not cost effective for us to do that. So the answer is no, we won't have any minimum security uh, facility anymore. And that's troubling for a number of reasons, not least of which is that most people at the satellite jail uh, are not there for violent offenses. So it's, there's, there's a question about whether or not they should be held in a maximum security facility while they're serving time for shoplifting or whether they're serving time for a suspended license. Um, but at the same time, I also wanted maybe some other jail building expert to be in the room to say, you know, there actually is a way that we could construct minimum security facilities in a cost-effective, responsible way. It just felt to me like a question that, that didn't have to reach that dead end so quickly. Um, and I hope we, we can maybe raise that again. Um, a third point that seemed really important, a lot of people raised, were again alternatives to incarceration. And we heard from a number of people who are sort of experts in their field coming forward to say, we have some good ideas here and we can work on them. As well as sort of bringing to mind again um, the, the, the Kalmanov report and so many good ideas there that just haven't been implemented or we haven't seen the full effect of their implementation yet. Um, and in particular, it seemed to me that Lynn Branham raised a good point about pretrial services and the importance of pretrial services in order to prevent some of the incarceration that we do now. Um, there was a certain, 
I have to admit, like a seismic shift in my thinking about all this when she mentioned the possibility of a MacArthur Foundation grant to help us plan for criminal justice reform in the county. I mean, that's a six-figure grant to start with, and the possibility that it become a seven-figure grant that's renewed over the course of several years. And I sort of looked at that and said, wow, that's an enormous possibility when the MacArthur Foundation gets behind you. A lot of times change can take place in a rapid fashion where it didn't seem like it was possible before. And that felt to me like there was a real possibility there, and I hope that that's further considered with all the stakeholders at the table. Um, and then finally, one of the points that seemed to be made by, by most everyone in the room was, we want to go slow with this. We want to be deliberate and thoughtful about this. We don't want to commit ourselves to any one direction until we've seen everything that's on the table. And I was heartened by that. Um, it felt to me like there are so many voices in this discussion that need to be heard and, and options that need to be considered that it really does take a large meeting of the minds for everyone to come up with the plan that's right for us and that will carry on for the next couple of generations the way a building will. You know, a building carries on for the next generation. Um, and so I guess what I left with was a lot of optimism from that meeting and, and um, a, a real sense that we're going in the right direction and doing the right thing here and that it could become even better in the next year as new options open up for us with the possibility of funding for a planning grant. Um, but I also felt just a little bit of tre trepidation because I know that when Kimmy Associates presented their plan, there was this sense in which, okay, the next step is, the next step won't cost $32 million. The next step is we go buy blueprints you know, of, of this plan so we can see what it would look like in particular. And that would be a smaller amount of money that's kind of easy to approve. And I thought to myself, if we move forward with that step, which is kind of so easy to do, then we've committed ourselves to a certain direction and really sort of swept away a lot of options off the table at that point because we're kind of committed to going in one direction. And I also don't think that probably the MacArthur Foundation folks will consider us for a grant to, to reduce the incarceration rate in our county if at the same time we're spending money on blueprints for jail beds. Um, uh, so, Mr. Custer, yeah. could you please wrap it up? Your time has already gone sure. by. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just in short, I guess, I was really thankful for that session last week, and I look forward to participating in more sessions like that in the coming, in the coming months. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, are there any other folks here that would like to participate in public participation? If not, then we will close that portion of the agenda and move on to the next item, which will be communications. Does any of the committee members, does any of the committee, does any committee member have any communication item to report to the committee? Do other board members present have any items to report? If not, do members of the staff wish to relate any items? Looks like nobody's in a, there isn't anybody in a communicating mood. Well, I will take, I will take care of part of it then. Um, I have one item. Well, doing my usual preparation for tonight's meeting, uh, I consulted my daily horoscope. It's about as good as anything. Uh, I happen to be one of those fun-loving, easy-going Scorpios. So today's horoscope for Scorpios is very instructive for tonight. Today's Scorpios horoscope. It will feel as if you are taking one step forward and two steps back. If you don't give in to frustration or anger, you will accomplish everything on your agenda. So with that hopeful thought, let's proceed to the next item. And that would be discussion of the uh, Sheriff's Master Operation Plan. Dana. Well, if I can, uh, I uh, had put a memo uh, out to, you, to the committee in the uh, packet, and if you had questions on that or if you want us to walk through that a little bit, what it, it's trying to do is just outline how we move forward from this step. As you saw in the uh, master plan report, 
that uh, was part of this, the study sketch, uh, session, they gave a project schedule that, uh, and this was a tentative project schedule just based on moving forward and, and what would be those next steps. And, and uh, one of those, the, the very first step of that, of course, was the uh, precast panel investigation, and, and Dana's going to tell you about that a little later. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to make sure that people understood was as we go through this process, one of the things that stood out in the study session was that the uh, cost of the facility uh, started becoming the focal point. And so wanted to just make sure everybody understood that, that the report that we were received is just the first step in a basically a four-step process. And, and so this, it gives you uh, in this first step, which is the report that was given again, uh, it is really a wide range of costs because they really don't know what the final product is yet. And so the next step in the process as it was outlined uh, in the uh, proposed schedule was the programming, the detailed program statement, and the schematics. That's where we start to put the facility shape and what goes into it. Uh, all of the slides that were shown during the presentation are just ideas that could go in and things that had been discussed. And so that next step then, uh, as it's completed, will get you a, a, and they, you know, that's a time for interaction with the committee, with the board, with the sheriff's operations and sheriff's uh, people at the jail and in law enforcement and with the public so that they can better configure that with a better configuration, the detailed programming statement and the uh, uh, first shot at the actual uh, design schematics, then they'll be able to narrow down that price and it'll be a, it'll have a, a smaller range at that point in time. Those plans allow you then to go out and it's, it was identified in the project schedule for the RFQ for the architectural engineering services that give you your final uh, actual design plans. And that design planning takes into account the detailed programming and the, the uh, schematic designs, and that's the starting point. And then they work again with the county, both the sheriff's operations, the board, other interested parties, to then really put the final touches on what that facility is going to look like. So they're, what they do is they put together all the bid documents. At that point in time, then you have the closest estimate of what those costs are going to be. And that's your third step. And in the fourth step, then you're out to bid and what the bids come in actually define what your actual costs are. We were, uh, the memo is trying to get people to understand that, you know, we have some cost estimates. We're not there yet. And so we, it's time to uh, work through this and, and refine those. The other thing that we wanted to point out because uh, obviously this is a very, uh, the estimated cost of the project is very high. And so one of the things that we had asked the uh, uh, Gorski Resec team to do is, since we are planning on, or the project's proposed schedule started construction in 2017, what would it have cost if the uh, county was starting to build the satellite jail that we have now in 2017 also, and the courthouse, if you built that in 2017 also. And so those numbers were put in here just to give you uh, an idea of the magnitude of this project versus other projects that were done. And it was kind of interesting, the satellite jail construction in 1995 cost the county $10 million, escalated to 2017 uh, dollars, it's estimated at 22,650,000. Where if you look at the courthouse, uh, in 2000, the cost was $23,800,000, and you escalate that to $2017, then you're looking at a $46,100,000 project. Just again, to give some perspective for the magnitude of the uh, project as it sits in the report uh, and is estimated at this time. And so if there was any other questions, we'd be happy to answer those. Uh, Rachel? Um, is the cost of what you describe as step two included in the contract we now have, or is that additional costs? 
there's a portion of that included uh, in, if you look at activity E in the uh, contract, there's two portions of that. The detailed programming, and that was estimated at the time the contract was put together because it depends on what the options are that you choose. And so uh, it was put into the contract at somewhere between $5,000 and $40,000 depending on the option that was chosen. The second part of that, the detailed uh, schematics, was not estimated at that time. It's estimated at approximately 15% of the project cost, which is the, the general fee for those services. And so it all depends on what options the, the county uh, chooses. And so in the contract, what's designed is after the options are chosen for moving forward, then it's to be negotiated what the actual costs are that based on what we're asking them to estimate. So I have two questions. So first of all, in terms of options, are we just talking about the two options they presented, meaning sheriff's operation in downtown, the sheriff's operation in the satellite jail, or is there any other options? The, those are the options on okay. the table those at the this options. point in okay. time. Um, and then did, Okay, so for the additional cost, the, the 15%, I might be wrong, but I don't think it's currently in the budget, is it? Uh, yes, Quiz. So um, I guess looking at next steps, one of the things that I, I don't see in the illustration of what's in the next steps is uh, uh, a reaction to the plan as it was defined. Um, I, I have some concerns. I know what, the, what their job was to do was to gather information from all of the um, interested parties uh, up to design a jail space and a sheriff's operation space that met what the functions needed and what people believe they needed to do the best job possible. What I, what I don't understand is after looking at the plan and studying it several times, um, I feel like the plan uh, covers uh, probably more um, uh, fluctuations than I, I currently have uh, the will to support. I think that has driven a plan that includes um, two, essentially two new pods, and on the basis of things like a, women, a women's jail population planning that is twice as much our maximum ever women's population. Um, so the point I'm getting to here in a kind of roundabout way is, uh, you know, there, there was a chance to take the report and react to the report and uh, ask questions about the report, there hasn't been an opportunity for the for this committee or for the board to come back and say, um, here's some constraints that uh, we feel maybe should be put on what we are able to do and what we should be doing. I'm not trying to pretend to know their business or know the sheriff's business or the or the administrators of the jail's business, but I also do know what the numbers that we're building for there is, and I and I still feel like the proposal that we have is like um, from a from an operations, a jail's operation and a justice operation standpoint, the best possible scenario. Now, I'm, I'm sure people would disagree with that, but I still think there is an opportunity to talk about certain things with regard to constraints. There's also the opportunity to talk about um, economies of scale and opportunities for cooperation. I don't know if this is the time or place to talk about them, but there are other uh, needs uh, for, uh, let's say, organizations of government that are aligned with this, uh, with our need to have an improved sheriff's operation and, and um, I don't know that they've been fully uh, investigated. 
Um, there have been opportunities like that in the past that didn't get acted on, and, and now there's regret. So um, I, I, I uh, certainly heard our public commenter tonight that you know once, once you draw, start drawing certain things, you, you've committed to a certain path. So before we start drawing things, I want to know how we're going to have that kind of input how we're going to investigate those possibilities. I, there's not two plans on the table. I, I, I can see at least three or four additional possibilities on the table around those plans. I mean, um, based on funding, and, and I, don't, I don't want to tell the, the sheriff this because I think he does a good job and he deserves a good place to do his work in, and, but one option is to solve the jail need and and put off the op sheriff's operations need is that the best choice I, I don't know I don't I don't know that it necessarily is but saying that there's only two options on the table I don't I don't think it's completely accurate and I don't think we've had the complete cycle of what I'll call reaction to this plan that we need before we start drawing things on paper that are going to, as you go forward, it becomes more rigid. It, it becomes, it goes from being the area of the possible to the, well, this is the way we designed it, so it can't vary too much from this. So um, those are the things that I think probably need to be addressed before we pay for plans. Um, and uh, I, I don't think that takes a lot of time to dig into, um, but it does take maybe maybe another cycle or maybe another um, conversation that that needs to happen before we take the next step. Josh, please. Yeah, I really and completely agree with what James just said. I would just add one more thing that hasn't really been addressed yet, and it's what Mr. Alex said last week at the study session. How are we going to pay for this thing? I realize. We are the facilities committee, and that's more of a finance committee issue. But I cannot see us moving forward paying more money for plans on a building that we have no idea how we're going to pay for. Um, if people are going to be serious about raising the public safety sales tax to pay for this, then they need to start talking about that with the community. If people are serious about doing a property tax increase to pay for this, then they need to start talking about that with the community. I, for one, am not seeing that. Uh, I think James is right. I think we need to seriously look at how we can not only scale back, we can scale back this plan. And personally, I'm at the level of I saw option three in there being as the 2.7 million just to get things up to speed and to code and to ba do basic maintenance. And that I might be willing to find the money for because we're talking about a lot of money and an investment that the community is, I don't think, willing to make. Uh, normally I wouldn't comment at this time, but I will, if I may. Um, this process is going to be slow and deliberate, and I think we'll have the time. We will be giving, be taking the time, and eventually we may have to uh, look at some other options. So I, I'm, my mind's not closed to that yet. Uh, I think that we have some... Uh, we need to take a look at some of these things and work uh, uh, within the board. And uh, I'm not quite ready to go to plans myself. I'm not sure that even next month would be appropriate. But uh, we have a lot of work to do, and that's what we're here for. And I uh, appreciate the comments that have been made by the members of the committee this evening. Thank you. Not, not to belabor the point, but because the money to fund the second step is necessary to do it, does that mean we have to wait till the next fiscal year? No, not necessarily. I mean, obviously, you could, you would have to amend this year's budget to um, do the full next step. But the board can do that if the board is of a mind to do that. 
Yeah, but the money has to come from somewhere else. And I don't remember the budget having any surplus in it. No, you're right. You would be spending money most likely from the public safety sales tax fund or the general fund, either or. No, I just wanted to make sure you, you got Rachel there. And I was curious if any of our visiting board members had anything to say. Uh, yes, Pius. Well, since Mr. Quisenberry invited me, I will speak. Uh, <laughs> we, you could say we have five options right now. We have option A, option B. Uh, the third option is what you mentioned, doing just the satellite jail addition and not doing, any, not doing much of the sheriff's uh, space. A fourth option would be uh, to do what Josh referred to, the 2.7. Uh, although I think actually that number would go up because that number is predicated on doing something in three years, but we could ask for a revised number, say if we did something in five years or ten years, I think that would be worthwhile actually, and and have those the, those different items listed in on page uh, two thirteen, have them uh, and fourteen, have them prioritized too, perhaps. The other option, of course, is uh, do nothing option, which is what we've been doing for for years, which is not a good option. Um, so that's what I have to, uh, what, what, uh, the money we just talked about, what would that be roughly, next phase, just top, top of the head? Rough estimate is in the $300,000 okay. range. All right, thank you. Uh, any more discussion on, uh, item eight? Yes, Deb, please. Um, is there any direction to staff for anything that you want done so that this discussion continues in April? Because I, I just haven't heard any. So if this were on the April agenda, it would be exactly what you've discussed tonight unless you want to give some direction about some additional investigation that you may want done or any, anything based on your recommendations that you would want done. Um, yes, Pius. Well, I'd actually like to go, uh, if you look at the option of, uh, I guess, my fourth option, what I, what I call the fourth option is the, the uh, $2.765 million uh, maintenance repair, three-year plan to get it, everything up and going for the big build. What if we say, okay, we're going to build, we're not sure what we're going to build, we're going to build maybe five years or ten years down the line, so could they expand on that $2.765 and obviously there's going to be more costs with the downtown jail, upkeep of that. I mean, there's hardly anything listed on there for the downtown jail on that right now. So that gives us a little more flexibility if we want to go the route, say we want to wait a few more years uh, for whatever reason. Uh, maybe the state funding will be more settled and we'll feel more comfortable about trying to ask the public for some sort of tax increase. Uh, yes, uh, Rachel. I mean, during the study session, when I suggested that I was disappointing, we don't see any more options, Mr. Kimmy's response was that there are more options and there are different to phase things, but he just didn't include it in the report. So whatever those things are, I would like to see them. I mean, I'm not sure what he was talking about because obviously the report didn't include any, but if he has anything in mind of how things can be phased or shrunk or expand, whatever, whatever it is that he was talking about, obviously this report didn't have any. Uh, thank you. Quiz? Yeah, one, one thing I, I would like to hear uh, from my fellow um, committee members is um, I'm going to share an opinion of my own based on feedback that I've heard from the community with regard to the downtown jail and um, taking, uh, using it for um, incarceration off the table. There's certainly been pushback in, in some of the conversations with the community on, on why we did that. Uh, I, I just want to say, for the record, I still very, feel very strongly that um, I, I don't want to put that back on the table because uh, I'm going to quote the ILPP report, but I'm not going to quote it verbatim, is, you know, close the downtown jail and consolidate your jail operations because you're going to save a ton of money because all of your money in this process, the bulk of your money is not what you build. 
It is in your staffing and your operations. And, you know, that $500,000 a year turns into $10 million in 20 years. So um, I, I don't want that back on the table. So if anybody is entertaining that or has, has been moved by that discussion, this would be a good time to speak up to that. Yes, Jack. I'm sorry. I was. You were saying so many good things. My mind started to wander a little bit on what you were saying that I didn't catch up. You're suggesting that refurbishing the downtown jail is probably something we shouldn't do because of the potential cost savings long term with salaries. Kind of throwing money, good money after bad. I yeah, running two jails is just too costly in the long term. So. Going back and taking a second pass or a second look at whether we could right. make a joint facility. I think people have been suggesting that in the context of um, uh, minimum security or some of the alt the other populations we want to serve. But the the answer is still the same. When you're going to run an operation like that, you may have a lower security operation, but you're still going to have people there 24 by 7, whether they're um, dealing with individuals that um, you feel like you need more security or not. And, and that means that's the factor. The, the 24 by 7, 365 days a year is the, for every position you have staffed, is the thing that drives those costs out of, out of control. And, um, and I, you know, I, I have, you know, there's a lot of feedback on the, the minimum security option. I heard that tonight. I've heard it in a number of other places. Um, I, I don't want to be as, as um, off-putting about that discussion as maybe the consultants were, but the, the reality of the situation is there are alternatives that are in place for that with home confinement and um, I, I don't know, I really don't know that the um, jail population is going to be significantly affected at this point because it has been driven down so low um, by looking at a, a minimum security facility option in a separate place. I just, I'm not compelled by that. So that's why I'm, I'm not entertaining these ideas that we should take a second look at that. Uh, yes, Jack. Um, I agree with you, Mr. Quisenberry. Um, I come from a background <clears throat> having worked for a sheriff's office. And over my years of experience, I um, spent many years in the jail um, working it. Worked my way up through the organization, retiring as an assistant sheriff. Our, the jail operation I was used to was the the daily population was over 5,000 or 5,000 people um, spread out over multiple facilities. And when we did our jail planning, always up front, first discussion was how much can we save if we consolidate in our jail construction and in the actual design of the jail to minimize the number of staff members needed for the practical daily functioning of inmate movement. You need the staff primarily because, uh, well, obviously they're watching the inmates, but you need more staff if you can't remotely move those inmates around. Personally, I think the design that we have at the satellite is not a good one, but it is the one that we have. It, was, it wasn't state-of-the-art when they made it. I can guarantee you that. We were building them years before that at um, designs that are continually copied even today. You want to design that jail so that you can move those inmates around through center consoles where staff can watch them, but you don't have to hire other people to open those doors and then you know, have them physically present to look around corners and so forth. It's all driven by the cost of manpower and minimizing that so that long-term you can find benefits in your jail operations and use that money elsewhere in the county, not spending it up on personnel that weren't necessary in the first place. It was just a byproduct of poor design. 
I personally don't care for, I, I, there's limitations on what Kimmy can do with what we have and expanding that. Um, you know, if you had the money, I'd say just knock it down. Long term, we'll recover it all, but we don't have that kind of money to do that. So we have to work with what we've got. So back to your point, the old jail, downtown jail, is archaic. It's going to create some issues with ADA and having to maintain it long term. I personally think that the sooner we get rid of that, get people out of there, and do something else with the building, whatever that means, which means we have to build something. Um, I don't think the number of beds the consultant is recommending is unreasonable um, because you can't always use your beds. You want to have them available for those times when you need them. But if you're running your jail at 95% or something close to that, full occupancy, that's pretty good. You don't want to be where I've seen us, where I've been. And that was inmates sleeping in the corridors and under court mandates to get them out, court decrees. That's going to put you in a really bad position. But that was because people kept pushing it off, kept pushing it off, and, to, and the sheriff just didn't have the funds to do anything. And finally, something had to be done, and the community recognized it. I hope this community doesn't end up there by pushing this off. This is something that needs to be addressed. I don't know where the funding will come from. That's a discussion of many, many people. But I just wanted to share that. And uh, I think what you're saying is uh, with some, some good wisdom, not having all the experience. But I think you see what truly is going on and what needs to be done. That's it. Thank you, Jack. Anybody else? Uh, yes, Patsy. Uh, two items. Um, we were in a conversation with the sheriff and Alan Jones, and the crux of that conversation is that the personnel saving is not projected to be as great as is being discussed um, by members of the committee. So it might be important to have the sheriff come and lay out some of those thoughts for all of you to consider. And the second is just a reminder of what um, Kimmy mentioned. I believe it was in, uh, in um, the conversation with Rachel, and that is he does have all these facts and figures that he just didn't bring to us in a, a big, probably loose leaf, and um, uh, maybe some digging around on those could um, broaden the scope of options that you all might be willing to think about uh, as compared to what was presented to us at the study session. Thank you. Any other comments? Um. Uh, just a, a one final question for your April meeting. Are, are you asking that the consult the consultant Kimmy and, and Gorski Reefstek and the sheriff be here so you can have a conversation back and forth about what's in the plan and why it's there and what could be removed? I mean, I'm not exactly sure, other than phasing what has been presented, how you and the architects are going to come to that without having a discussion. Uh, Deb, to reply to your question, uh, and you asked a question earlier, my thought to take away from here this evening is, uh, number one, we need a plan to pay for the uh, programming and schematics. You might want to bring that to us either in April or May. Uh, we need a more defined set of costs uh, and of the needs to operate the satellite jail for the next three to five years. And I think during the next month or so, uh, we need to take a look and see if we do need to have Kimmy come back before us and also uh, talk with the sheriff. Um, so I think that's what we should take do in the next month or two. And uh, that would be my suggestions. I'd be glad to take any other ideas from the committee that would like to come forward with them.
This isn't an idea, but this is a further comment. Um, I, I would like to build as little jail as possible. I, I'll put that on the table. That's, that's my goal. However, I don't want to build too little. And, and the reason why I'm saying that is, uh, I know Steve Beckett was at the, at the meeting um, last week, and, and uh, he is a person who's been there and he's seen the results of one side or the other like squeezing so hard that something gets done that we regret within a, a short time period, right? So, you know, that, that may have, that sounds like what's ha what happened in the 70s with our downtown facility to some extent. It got squeezed down. Um, it may have happened with the satellite facility. Um, corners were cut, as we now know with our with our concrete walls um, things like that so I, I don't want people to misunderstand you know while I would like to have less incarceration and need less space to have incarceration we need to do what's going to be we're going to build a building that's should be good for 30 40 or even 50 years and we shouldn't do that blindly either to make it as small as possible because that's what we feel it should be or make it as big as possible because we feel that's what it should be. We have to do our best job for something that is going to last and so that uh, we don't, as Patsy is fond of saying, repeat the sins of our fathers um, with regard to that. So while it may sound like I'm pushing hard to make smaller, I'm pushing hard to understand to make sure that what we build is going to last for a while and that you know we won't have in another 15 years some judge telling us we have to build more. I mean, that, that comment resonates with me. Um, Steve Beckett's comment resonates with me. Um, as much as I would like for one thing to be true, I may have to yield there to make sure that we have something that has longevity. Thank you. Well, I will uh, comment also at this point. I do not believe the number of beds that uh, uh, is being proposed for the, the uh, satellite jail is out of line. Um, realize our population in the next 50 years is going to probably at least increased by 50 percent, if maybe maybe double. Um, for us to build a facility that's going to last that long, it would be very difficult. We, we need to build a quality a physical plant to do that and then take care of it. So I do not feel that we're overbuilding. Uh, if we end up needing 25 beds less, it's not going to cost us that much more to build 25 beds over. What I mean, if, if long term it shows we only need 275 versus 300, it will really not cost that much to build that additional factor of safety in. We have, I, I, I want people, I would encourage people to go back and look at the files on the, on the downtown jail and the satellite jail. Those boards were under tremendous pressure. They did the best they knew how or the best they had money with at the time. I hope that we can avoid that. But again, those, those, uh, that process is well documented. And uh, again, I would like for us to be able to build a quality, easily maintained facility that is safe and humane. And I do not believe we're overbuilding. Thank you. Yes, John. Thank you. I'm going to apologize before I say anything because I said this a million times before. But it, first of all, I'm really pleased that this committee and the way that you've taken hold of this project because I do think it's important. But, uh, you know, we can build all you want to build, but by golly, if we don't take care of them, the downtown jail's in the shape it is today because we didn't take care of it. Just like we started with Brook and Center. 
we were letting it go downhill until finally we got enough people to do some minor things that needed to be done. I don't want you all to lose, lose uh, the, the fact that, that our buildings are in the shape they are today because of neglect on our part, the board. And so as we talk about the monies, and it takes money, I mean, it's all about money, whether you're building or repairing, but if you don't take care of what you got, you don't have any business building new. And that's pretty blunt, but that's the way I really feel. If we can't take care of it, we shouldn't be building it. We haven't done that. I hope you all can figure that out and make it work for us. Thank you, John. Anybody else? If not, um, I would like to move on. Um, and the next item of the agenda would be the facility director's report. Dana, please. Thanks, Gary. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, item A is a review of the uh, GHR's uh, nursing home uh, mechanical study. There are three documents that were included uh, within your packet. Uh, the first is actually the uh, GHR uh, study. Uh, if you'll remember, uh, the nursing home um, hired GHR to do an assessment, valuation of all the mechanicals uh, systems within the, within the nursing home uh, last fall. Uh, they completed that uh, probably in, in December and uh, forwarded uh, this report in a draft form. Um, uh, they visited the uh, nursing home on a number of occasions, sat down with uh, uh, Craig Turvin, uh, Kirk uh, Kirkland, uh, myself, uh, uh, again, as well as is going through the systems. Uh, to provide us with this 40-page uh, document. Uh, they were asked uh, then uh, to basically list uh, each of the systems, if the system was fine, uh, you know, uh, you didn't have to put anything, but uh, and to rank them into three categories. Um, first importance is life safety. Uh, second importance was code compliance, anything in order to stay open, whether it's uh, water temperatures, uh, heating, boilers, et cetera. Uh, and the third then would be system efficiencies. Uh, what can be done to uh, uh, improve, maintain and improve the system mechanicals in order to uh, um, operate and expend less, with less money, uh, obviously, than the, in what they're currently doing. Um, this, we can certainly go through this. Uh, there's a number of things that, uh, that are in there that are, that are first. We, we have a tremendous boiler uh, issue. Uh, uh, and those for for those of you who haven't uh, heard this story before the uh, the boiler um, Intake there are four boilers uh, within the building the boiler intake is uh, just feet away from the uh, dryers uh, vent on top of the roof and what has happened uh, Unfortunately is that the uh, lint uh, from the dryers has been ingested into each of the boilers one of them uh, in fact has uh, been decommissioned we can no longer use it uh, if it was started up uh, we would worry tremendously about uh, having a fire uh, so we're operating off of, uh, of three boilers uh, versus uh, four uh, we're providing uh, good consistent heat with the three uh, however those three that are in, in, in existence and, and uh, live there right now uh, have a similar problem they're just not as bad as the, as the unit that has been uh, turned off. Uh, we have changed the air intake. Two of them right now are actually taking air from, from inside the mechanical room, which is not the best thing in the world to, to happen, but in order to maintain uh, consistent heat and to keep those boilers going, that's what uh, was necessary to, uh, to do. Um, the nursing home knows they've got to solve the uh, dryer problem, and, and uh, it needs to either be re relocated somewhere in the building, possibly outsourced. They've got to work through those issues, but, but boilers are certainly on there. Uh, as, as we got this draft and we're discussing it with both the nursing home and, and uh, GHR, uh, we had an issue come up with uh, <laughs> hot water heaters. There were originally six wa hot water heaters uh, placed in the building. Um, Several years after uh, the building opened up, uh, one was replaced uh, uh, because of the demand for hot water for the laundry in the kitchen, which it serviced, uh, were so much greater than uh, what it was designed for and capable of. Uh, so that was, was taken out. But of the uh, five that are currently in for, this provides shower uh, water, bath water, uh, uh, sink water uh, for uh, uh, both the staff and, uh, and certainly our, our residents. Um, GHR did not pull the uh, burners 
nor would you think you had to pull the burners. Uh, water heater should, uh, commercial water heater should last you uh, easily eight to 10 or 12 years. Uh, we've got eight years in on these and uh, what we've uh, seen by pulling the uh, burners out because uh, they weren't functioning accordingly and, and uh, producing enough uh, hot water uh, is that the air intake um, inside the units themselves uh, have, uh, have rusted, uh, have corroded and uh, actually have four out of five have some holes on the inside uh, and it's impacting how the air, fresh air is delivered to the burner and affecting how the gas burns, so they're, they're, they're not very efficient um, and, and we're, we're constantly uh, fighting those. So those are two items that we really need to come to grips with uh, uh, quickly. Uh, if you looked at the third uh, document that we included, you, you can see that uh, that's really an FY 2015. Those two items, uh, I would rate the, the hot water heaters as being absolutely number one, have to be able to do, we have to be able to supply hot water for uh, a bathing, washing hands um, uh, to both the residents and, and, and staff. Um, second is certainly the boiler issue needs to be addressed, but the nursing home is really gonna have to uh, sit and work through the, the dryer issue uh, first because you wouldn't wanna invest in, in uh, that significant amount of money uh, until you take care of, uh, of your lint uh, problem. Um, it's more than the 300 and approximately 50,000 they have to work with on a on an annual basis, at least for the first year. If you uh, took a look again at that uh, third uh, document, what we tried to do is take these categories and rank them uh, with their rank and spread them out over a 10 year period uh, to show basically a, a blueprint uh, for what needs to be done with the mechanical systems. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of money. Uh, if you total it up, it's a little over $2 million uh, off an eight year old building. Um, you know, it, 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 it is what it is at, uh, at this point, uh, uh, we're, we're faced with, uh, with dealing with and, and have to work with the nursing home, uh, management team to, uh, to come to grips with, uh, with how we move forward to replace these items and get them done over the next 10 years so that, uh, it continues to be operational. That's uh, any questions? Thank you, Dana. With uh, next with, time, with that I'll go up a quick update on the, uh, the courthouse LED uh, a light replacement. I don't have any hands out handouts, but um, our lights came in uh, 510. If you remember, uh, we purchased uh, 510 LED fixtures, uh, uh, bulbs, four four foot tubes, um, replaced T8 fluorescent tubes. Mm -hmm. Uh, above the entrance to uh, the courthouse and as well on uh, uh, first floor, second and third floor in front of Katie Blakeman's area and of course the uh, courtrooms on, on two and, uh, and three. Uh, we're about 60% through the process. Uh, the uh, lights above that need require a 32-foot uh, lift, uh, two-thirds of them have been done. Uh, this Saturday uh, we're going to finish uh, that portion of work and that's right over the center of the entryway can't be done obviously during a, a normal working day eight to five it has to be done outside of those hours so we'll come in this Saturday morning and uh, and wrap that up and and uh, the remainder of it should be wrapped up sometime uh, middle of next week but uh, uh, they look great if uh, you get a chance to stop by and take a look at them uh, uh, they do look terrific and uh, you know they operate for pennies versus uh, the, the T8 which is you know a, a good fixture and a good bulb but uh, uh, the LEDs will last a lot longer and, uh, and use less, uh, less power. So uh, that project is, is moving forward. I'll uh, get to see real quick, which is an update on the courthouse window replacement. I handed out a, uh, a document, actually two documents, uh, set it on your table if, uh, if you didn't see it. Uh, I did set one over there. Uh, uh, Pius, I, I think, I thought it was right in front of you. Basically what this is, is just uh, real briefly, this shows you uh, scope of work. This is taking out, removing the existing windows uh, within the original courthouse. Um, they're the original frame. Uh, the glass was replaced in 86. Um, the majority of them, the seals are broken. They're, they're, they're leaking air. Uh, there is no uh, insulation in the frame at all. Um, uh, the exterior of it is discolored, uh, doesn't look good. 
Um, we budgeted uh, two hundred fifteen thousand uh, dollars in this year's uh, uh, budget uh, for that. Um, we've got a preliminary schedule. We've hired uh, IGW, a local architect here, as uh, most of you are aware. They were the architect of record for the courthouse. Uh, to basically put together um, uh, preliminary design, the review. Uh, these are the same similar windows that uh, were put in in the addition. Uh, so they will go through and uh, put together preliminary design, construction documents, uh, assist us through the uh, bidding uh, negotiations, and then uh, some uh, contract administration uh, and, and observation. Um, this project really uh, it, it's going to be logistically challenging for uh, both our staff and uh, the courthouse uh, and the various folks that are in there. There's over 60 offices that are impacted. Um, what does that mean? Well, that, that's, that's public defender's office, state's attorney's office, uh, probation. Uh, all of those offices are, are <laughs> operational on a day-to-day -day basis, Monday through Friday. So we're, we're going to ask... Uh, we, we believe that the successful contractor, and they'll be able to do more uh, or less, but we, we hope they can at least do three uh, offices per day. Um, um, some of those, obviously, are up on the second and third floor. They'll be operating off of lifts. Um, but uh, it, it, it will be a challenge. Uh, we'll have to move furniture. Our goal is to take blinds down, uh, uh, repair, clean the blinds, obviously, uh, uh, or replace if they're non-functional. Um, we're going to throw it back to the uh, contractor, the successful low bidder. Uh, any any wall damage that uh, is done through the process of putting stuff in will be their responsibility. Uh, we believe that will uh, will create uh, uh, a very good desire on their behalf to make sure it's a clean installation and that uh, they minimize any damage that, that they do. Uh, and then puts the onus back on, on them. Uh, we've put together a, a brief schedule as you can go through uh, over the next uh, 45 days here. Uh, roughly, we'll be uh, putting together a bid document. We'll bring it to, to this body uh, at the next meeting in, in April. We'll have uh, some opportunity to give some feedback. Uh, like to get it posted by April 20th. We'll have a... Um, a vendor pre-bid meeting. Uh, certainly we'll be reaching out and once it's posted to uh, various vendors, uh, both locally and in the state, to uh, uh, certainly remind them that that's out there and uh, hope that they're able to participate so that we, we, uh, we get some um, uh, good contractors here. Um, basically, once it's awarded, uh, we believe, uh, you know, the glass and the, uh, and the frames are, are not that long of a lead item, so we believe we can start this project uh, about that uh, end of the third week, June 22nd or so. It's going to take, uh, you know, most of the summer to get this done, um, complete the window project by the 14th, plus a, a add-on additional two week for any punch list items. So it's, it's, it's going to carry on uh, all summer. Um, it'll be inconvenient, as I said, logistically challenging, but uh, uh, the overall project is... Uh, uh, I think pretty positive for uh, for the courthouse. Attached to this document is uh, is a copy of the IGAW uh, IGW agreement. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, any questions? Okay. Uh, any other items, uh, Dana? Uh, I'll, I'll uh, cover one real uh, quick and uh, wasn't uh, bringing it here. I was going to bring it to the next one. I'll have some more information. But uh, uh, Van uh, Anderson uh, mentioned the uh, precast uh, panel investigation of the uh, satellite jail. Uh, we discussed and, and you approved us moving forward with that investigation at the last meeting. Uh, we have uh, uh, worked out an arrangement with um, ERA, Engineering Resources uh, Associates here in town. Uh, John Fraunhofer is the uh, forensic engineer who we'll be using. Um, they will be doing the engineering study. Uh, we will be providing uh, and paying for uh, any and all work associated uh, with the project itself. Uh, for instance, County Highway will uh, supply uh, a backhoe operator. Uh, we'll work with uh, uh, Deuce Construction. Uh, they'll supply carpenter, uh, concrete finisher. Uh, those uh, skilled trades will actually be um, 
hammering out with his core drilled out by uh, Penn Hall, another contractor who we will will work with. Um, Curlin Steel is uh, uh, talk with them. They're kind of standing the wings. Uh, once the uh, uh, the engineer has conducted his uh, analysis, uh, if there's a repair or a reconnection that needs to be made, Curlin Steel is just down the street. They can fabricate and then uh, uh, weld and and uh, and put it back together. Um, and then uh, the other aspect of the investigation deals with uh, with the roof and uh, peeling back portions of the roof on three panels. Uh, so uh, TSI Advanced Roofing, who put in the roof uh, originally and has been repairing it for for 18 or so years uh, on occasion, uh, will be uh, the folks who will take apart the EPDM uh, uh, roof and expose the the joint between the the roof panel and the uh, in the wall panel. So. Um, we will have a meeting uh, February 20th. It's kind of a kickoff meeting to discuss with all parties uh, the work plan and there's a process. We have a preliminary work plan that's uh, been been developed. Uh, we'll talk through that at that meeting. It may uh, uh, adjust slightly. And then we hope to kick this off sometime in April as soon as uh, Mother Nature uh, allows us to uh, to have the temperatures necessary to uh, to do the work, do the digging. Uh, we'll dig down to the uh, bottom edge of the foundation, but it's got to be uh, you know above 30, uh, 32, uh, the lowest uh, at night. It can't be below freezing. Uh, we might uh, have an issue or problem, so we've got to wait till uh, till weather allows us to to do this investigation. So, so it's a quick update, and I'll have more to report at uh, at the next meeting. Okay, was that March the twentieth meeting? Yes. Could I say in wrong date? I don't know. Okay, yeah, March 20th. Okay. I thought maybe, but yeah, March 20th. I hope to be able to attend that. It should be interesting. Um, I'd like to move on to other business. Are there, yes, Patsy, please. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, I hope everybody read uh, very carefully the needs of the nursing home. Um, because my takeaway is almost everything in that report are design issues. And so I hope we weigh that seriously as we move forward on even a bigger and more expensive project than the nursing home was. Uh, thank you. That was very perceptive of you, Patsy. Uh, any other items of other business? Well, then I'd like to move on to the chair's report. The future, uh, the next meeting of the uh, facilities committee will take place on Thursday. Remember, uh, that's being moved to Thursday because it's election day on that uh, first Tuesday in April. So it will be Thursday, April 9th uh, at 6.30 at the Elias Building Executive Conference room. We're going to meet over at Eli Elias uh, Executive Conference Room. And prior to our meeting, there will be a tour of the Elias building, and it'll start at 545 in the Executive Conference Room. Um, I want to thank uh, Dana, his staff, along with Gl uh, Jim Gleason for the report on the mechanical electrical plumbing systems at CCNH, or Champaign County Nursing Home. I would mention that in addition to the MAP needs at the home, repainting, refurbishing, and refurnishing the home will also require significant additional resources in the coming years. And hopefully we can sit down and try to figure out how we're going to fund the necessary MAP pro uh, improvements as well as uh, the refurbishing and refurnishing of the nursing home in the coming years. The other item that was kind of brought to me this evening, and I'll uh, folks consider this, but there is some thought that maybe we ought to move this facilities committee to meeting to 6 p.m. Uh, let me know your thoughts. I think we will still go ahead with the April meeting, as we've already noted. But uh, as we get into the summer, uh, perhaps the chair will use its, its uh, uh, prerogative and, and set those at 6 p.m. if all of you care to have it changed. Personally, I don't care. Yes, Deb. 
Um, I believe you would have to amend the annual calendar of meetings, so it would require an action item by the Facilities Committee to do that. Thank you. I, I might mention just for consideration that uh, the 630 time does allow us an opportunity um, uh, for you to, uh, to, to go to work and then uh, if we're going to continue uh, these tours of, uh, of county facilities, which I do think is important for, for the committee, um, that allows you uh, an opportunity to continue to go to work and uh, be here at 515 5.30ish or so, uh, and, and still be here for a 6.30 meeting. Uh, if you moved it up, uh, it may be uh, impactful on the on regular work schedule. Uh, yes, Pius. Uh, I like the 6.30 time. I also think members of the public would prefer it because it would be difficult for them to get a full meal in. Say they get off work at 5, then they have to get a meal and get here by 6. It, it would put pressure on them. Okay, as I've mentioned, uh, it's, I, I really don't have any problems with 6 or 6.30. And I generally don't get a meal before, until after this meeting anyway. Oh, and I probably shouldn't have a meal after this meeting. <laughs> but anyway, um, that, those will be my comments uh, on the chair's report. The next item would be the uh, semi-annual review of closed session minutes. And we have a letter from the state's attorney basically saying that we have none to review at this time. Is that correct, Deb? Um, he has conducted his review, and there are none that, pursuant to your resolution, would be recommended to be opened at this time. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, the... There are, will be no items uh, to be placed on the consent agenda because we had no action items. And so with that, if there's nothing else, I would entertain a motion. To, uh, yes. One, I forgot to mention one thing. I did hand out one other uh, document. Uh, that is from the uh, Community Foundation. Uh, if you remember, we did a, uh, a LED light replacement on the clock tower. Um, and we were uh, uh, successful in, in uh, getting them to agree to pay for the majority of, uh, of the funding uh, that covered uh, actually purchase of the lights and installation of the lights. Uh, the county was responsible for uh, the lift uh, that got us up to the top of the, of the clock tower and, and uh, attached to that letter, uh, you'll see on the back, is a, a check for a little over $16,000, which, uh, which covered the costs of, uh, of purchase and installation. Thank you. That's great news. Again, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. We are adjourned. Thank you.